In this session, uh, we will discuss about the total strain energy theory, which is the fourth theory of failure that we are going to discuss. It's otherwise called as the Higgs uh, theory. And when compared with the previous three theories of failure that we have discussed, this has got some uh, difference. The difference is in the aspect of energy. Previous uh, theories of failures were comparing everything with the normal stress, normal strain and uh, shear stress. But here onwards, we are going to compare it with the energy of the material. So, but the definition itself remains safe. That means we are comparing the energy. If the energy generated within the system crosses or reaches the energy at the yield value, then we can expect the failure. So, everything is compared like we did for the previous theories of failure. So, here we are going to calculate what is the strain energy developed within the material by the application of load. And we are comparing it with the strain energy at the yield value, right. So, at the yield, if the developed strain energy crosses the yield value, failure is inevitable. That is how we are going to discuss the uh, theories of uh, failure. Now, for the total strain energy theory or the Higgs theory, it states that the failure at any point in a body subjected to state of stress begins only when the energy density absorbed at the points equals to the energy density absorbed by the material when subjected to elastic limit in uniaxial stress subjected to uni elastic limit in a uniaxial stress state. Uh, this uh, definition may take you to a confused state. Do not worry. Uh, the definition is very simple, can be stated like this. You test a material using a UTM, uniaxial tension test. You calculate the yield value or you find out the yield value of the material, right. Using this yield value in the elastic limit, you initially calculate the strain energy at the yield point, right. Now, things are very simple. You calculate the energy developed within the material due to the external loads and you compare with the energy at the yield value, yield point, that is all, right. So, here also we are comparing everything with the yield value, right. Now, how can we find the strain energy? So, we know that the strain energy density, right, strain energy density is given by u is equal to sigma square by 2e and if we, if we rearrange this in terms of strains, we can say that it is sigma by 2 e into sigma, right, sigma square by 2 e. And if we want to uh, introduce stress or strain uh, into the strain energy equation, if we take these two together, we can say that this contributes towards the strain. So, I can rewrite this equation as half into sigma into strain. Now, we have a stress term and a strain term in the material or in the equation, right. Now, let us discuss about the strain energy. So, we have sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 as the maximum principal stresses. Corresponding to this, we have maximum principal strains as epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and finally, epsilon 3, right. And the strain energy that develops due to the sigma 1 and epsilon 1 is half into sigma 1 epsilon 1 and similarly, we have half into sigma 2 epsilon 2 and similarly, we have half into sigma 3 epsilon 3. And if we add these three strain energies, we are going to get the total strain energy and that is what given here, the total strain energy. Now, the question is how can we calculate the epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 and we know the equations to calculate the epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 by using these three equations, right. Now, if we substitute all these equation into the previous equation that we wrote for this total strain energy and upon rearranging we can get an equation like this, right. 
1 by 2 e sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 3 square minus 2 mu into sigma 1 sigma 2 plus sigma 3 sigma 1 plus sigma 2 sigma 3. So, this is actually the equation or this is the actual equation for the shear stress developed within the material due to the application of external load. Now, we have to compare this with the yield value or the strain at the yield value. The strain at the yield value is nothing but sigma square by 2 e. Sigma y will change to sigma y. So, sigma square by 2 e is going to be the uh, value of strain or energy at the yield value. Now, so we can say that if we cancel out these two, 2 e, the equation is going to change like sigma 1 square or we can say that uh, this is going to be like sigma y square is equal to something this one will come right. So, if you take sigma y square to the other side we can rewrite the equation like sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square and so on so on so on so on minus sigma y square right. Now, let us let us talk about this as the energy or the part of the energy developed with not the energy this is the this can be stated as sigma e square right and we can say that sigma e square is equal to this value we have written all these things in the form of a sigma e square minus y square right and if we rearrange all these things if we rearrange all these equation it can be written in the form of this equation right so this is the equation of an ellipse when it is defined in the eta and zeta terms. Do not worry much about the eta and zeta, we have to do, do a lot of derivation in between these two steps which I have not done here because all those things will make you feel uh, annoyed. So, I am not going to do that. So, uh, the simplest uh, explanation what I have to I, I like to give is that uh, you have to rearrange all these things and finally, when you rearrange it and define an eta and zeta axis in between sigma 1 and sigma 2, we can say that this equation corresponds to the equation of an ellipse and this ellipse will give you the safe zone when we design a component using the maximum strain energy theory. Right? So, we can say that when we design something, you have to use this equation. This is the equation for the three dimension. So, when you consider the two dimensional case, it is going to be sigma e square equal to sorry, sorry, it has to be like this sigma y square is equal to sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus mu into sigma 1 sigma 2 because sigma 3 in sigma uh, when you consider two dimensional case, sigma 3 is equal to 0, which changes this particular equation to an equation of this form and we can say that since sigma y is here, it is in a critical zone. If you want to introduce a safe zone here, what we will do? It is going to be sigma allowable or in other words, sigma allowable square is equal to sigma y divided by factor of safety all square is equal to sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus mu into sigma 1 sigma 2. So, this is how we introduce the factor of safety into the equation and this is how we have to solve the problem. Right? So, you calculate even though we are using all these sigma 1 sigma 2 normal stresses, this clearly indicates the uh, design under the maximum principle strain energy not principle strain energy strain energy right. So, the name might be different maximum principle stress maximum shear stress strain energy theory or maximum normal strain energy like that, but the terms that we are going to use here or all these concepts are uh, reduced to sigmas and tos. I will say that it is exactly sigmas sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma y like that we are not using tau in any of the uh, equations, but indirectly we are relating all these sigma 1, sigma 2, mu all these things towards some specific theories of failure. So, this is how the maximum strain energy theory uh, has been defined 
So kindly go through the theory. You need to study only the final equations. There is nothing more to do in this. Okay, but I just explained how this final equation has been derived. Okay, so instead of directly stating the final equation, you should have a basic understanding about why, how this equation came into the picture. That's why I explained all these things. So uh, study the theories of failure, and one more theory is left with. It is the distortion energy theory and that is the final theory of failure, the fifth theory of failure that we are going to discuss and which will be discussed in the next uh, session. Thank you.